I finally figured out lately that there are rules as to what a CEO is supposed to be. This stupid rules. And you know, just being who I am, it's, it's work and I. I. I wish it didn't take me 58 years to figure it out. Let's talk about your story. So you grew up in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Yes. Parents are a teacher and a nurse. Yep. Were you always outspoken? Um, no. I, um, that's a good question. Uh, no. You know, and I'm still probably not totally outspoken. Oh, please. I, I mean, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the guy in the, in the party that walks around and, you know, kind of is Mr. Social. But you're um, the guy who puts out the manifesto. I've got an opinion. You take on your competitors yeah. very vocally. Yeah. You, you've done some things that a lot of other people in other industries and in your industry would probably shy away from in a role of CEO. Oh yeah, oh, are you kidding me? And of a public yeah. company. Yeah, listen, the, um, and I, I'm very proud of that. The, the issues are, am I more colorful and different than other CEOs. Yes, but that's as much a flaw as the other CEOs as it is that on the continuum, I'm a little bit outspoken. I've always been an athlete. I've always been a competitor. And I, I love the fight. I love the game. Uh, what I do as a leader is, is, especially in failing times, find a path forward, set a strategy, give hope, communicate, align people behind me. Um, and I don't spend a I don't, I don't do, like outside of today, and it's great that we do it, I do customers and employees. I don't go to those meetings where smart people talk at each other all the time. Um, you don't yeah. do the speaking circuit. No, I mean, I, I, I don't, I go talk to my employees. I've, I've got 18 major call centers, and I've been to every one five times. I just fly in, and I stand on a piece of furniture and take selfies and say thank you. I go, I visit stores every day. Those are all the... Th those are the, the people that I... And you talk to your customers, your consumers on mm. social media all the time. Not just so... So when I, when I took this job, I, I didn't know anything about wireless because it's not what I did. What I did every night is I would dial into an observation number where I can hear both sides of customer service calls. And I would, you know, get a bottle of wine and I would sit <laughs> for hours and I would hear, hello, can I help you? And I would hear everything that went on. I learned everything I needed to know. And then ultimately... This was in the beginning for you. In the beginning. I still do it. I still do it now. It's fantastic. Wait, so you're saying if, if you're a T-Mobile customer, there is yeah. a possibility on the uh, call with customer service 100%. that the CEO is listening Ab in. Absolutely. And then the CEO goes into his staff meeting and when we're talking, we have tremendous amounts of data. But if, if that call doesn't have the same kind of gist of the data, it's wrong. And then the, the other thing is that conversation in, I go, I go almost every day to a store. We have, we have thousands and thousands of stores. And I walk in and ask three questions. How's business? Because my job is to get people in the door. Uh, are you making any money? The average age of these kids is 27 or 28. And no matter how self-actualizing you are, they're not making money. You know, it's not. And then, is there anything I can do? Can I help? And then you, you find out what's going on. And those two interactions, a customer care call and a sales retail call, it tells you everything you need to know. And all the stuff we do here today, a lot of it comes from Twitter. So I'm, I'm a big Twitter user, quite a bit of Instagram, Facebook. I mean, I have my own little cooking show. Um, but I get all, I get ideas here. Now, I probably spend more time than anybody would think is appropriate for a CEO on social. People are realizing it's not a game. I'm not in there playing. I'm learning everything I need to know from my customers' employees. I've got three and a half million you know, followers and growing, but with a big base. And I have over 500,000 viewers a week on my Slow Cooker Sunday show on Facebook Live. Happy Slow Cooker Sunday! Now, they sound like little games, but boy, I'll tell you, they're powerful. But what is the most valuable thing you've learned from social media and the interactions you've had? Um, direct, open, honest feedback from customers and from employees. Whether you want to hear. Now, interestingly, when somebody, and I get thousands a day, somebody sends a note and then you reply, 
they, they're your customer for life. They forget what their problem was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I actually go in and I'll say, can I call you? And I'll call. And these are, these are just so valuable. Now, what I've tried to do is, how do you scale that? Right. And truthfully, what I've got now is, if you take full-time, part-time, temporary employees, we have about 100,000 people that do something T-Mobile every day. I would tell you that almost all those people enjoy doing the same thing. So the culture of our company is everybody is doing this every day. And, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm proudest of with T-Mobile. And I tell you uh, a weird story, which is what I'm proudest of is if you go to a store, pick one in Las Vegas, and it's 8 p.m. and the store is going to close and the lights go off and the people leave, my employees don't change their clothes before they leave because they're proud to have, you look at those people from Verizon, they can't wait to get those clothes off. And, and that that's kind of says something about who we are. You mentioned earlier um, failure and dealing with failure and getting through it. What's something recent that you feel like you failed at and how did you get through it? Ooh, ah, that's a great question. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of small field. I always feel like I'm not doing enough. You know, You're I, not doing enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I always think that I could give more. Like today, I will go beat myself up today. I, you know, you, 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 know, you swore a little too much or you didn't have enough energy here. You missed, the, you know, this point. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm very critical of myself. Um, but, you know, I, I, you get up and, and move on. I, you know, a lot of, the, I, I, I realize I've got a lot of people here counting on me and me on them. So, yeah, I'm self-critical. I don't celebrate enough. You have to enjoy the moments yeah. that you're living well, in. Well, you, you learn that if you don't, others don't get a chance to. So, I don't know. I can't I think of, uh, probably have a, I do know that I had, 25 New Year's resolutions. So oh, I got, really? Okay, I'm tell not me. Sure. No, I can't do that. How about like five of them? No, just to, you know. One of them. Got, can't, no, can't do Are that. Are they really personal? Yeah, I mean, everything from, you know, I want to take two weeks of vacation twice this year. I don't take enough vacation. I want to go with my daughters to Hong Kong. We used to live there, you know. Uh, you know, in the normal health ones, I want to cut the red meat out to once a <laughs> you know, just a lot of them. But it, it, I actually sat there with one of my daughters at 1130 and we both got out a pad and we made the list. And, you know, it's not, wow, I'm a wonderful person. It's, it's there's so many things I could do better and different. Mm. And that's, you know, that's, that's kind of who I am. I, it's interesting you bring that up because I think a lot about our phone and the importance of having phones yeah. and phones that work and give us access to the world, but they also hold us hostage at times to not doing the things that we find right. valuable, um, to spending too much time awake, too much time working, yeah. not enough time sleeping, not enough time being really present. Yeah. How do you balance that as somebody who's so introspective, yeah. but you also run this company? Yeah, I don't. I, you know, and I'm, I'm not the poster child for balance. I, I, don't, I don't have any. Well, how uh, much do you sleep a night? Oh, uh, no, see, that, that's a fascinating point. I, I get in bed. I know, I know that if you're going to keep the schedule that I keep, you get in bed. Now, I don't know how, you know, if it's always a full night's sleep. You have your but, phone in your hand when you get in bed? Yeah, no, it's, it's there, and I, you know, kind of look at it. Uh, it's my alarm clock. It's the last thing I do. And, the, you know, I do all my own email, and I do all my own social. So it's sometimes when I get in bed, it's, it's two hours, you know, I'm, I'm 400 emails behind today. Your relationship with your employees is, it, it seems from the way that you've described it, much closer than what yeah. you would find a lot of CEO relationships. Yep. How do you work to inspire them? Besides just having the positive attitude that you have, how do you, in such a large company, get buy-in from every last employee and get them to really sign on to the mission? Well, it started, you know, when I, when I took over the company four years ago, a little more than four years ago, this company was dying. It was, it was just a uh, previously uh, attempted to be acquired by AT&T and it was losing, you know, two and a half million customers a year and it was ready to be sold for parts, but the people you know, the brand was still good and the people were, were ready to see an alternative. And four years ago we were here, we had no iPhone, 
we were, you know, churn was through the roof and the company was dying. But at that time, I told them that we were going to change the whole industry. And, and in, you know, in an inspiring way, we're, gonna, we're not just going to survive. We're going to change the entire wireless industry in the world. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to do it together. And everybody got on board. And now, you know, they're, the other things follow. You know, we've gone from 33 to 72 million customers. We've gone from dying to, you know, thriving. We've gone from not being a public company to being a stock that's, you know, been going up 50% a year. And amongst the things that I did is I gave every employee in the company when we went public stock. And then every year they get stock, not as a substitute for pay. So they're all shareholders and, you know, they, they do buy Ownership. It. But I do, I spend, um, I don't stay in my office. I go, especially call centers. I love these people. I think they know I love them. Uh, it, and if, it, if you ever need to understand why, just go listen. People don't dial 611 because they're happy. What's the worst advice you've been given in your career? Oh, you know what? Uh, I can remember, but do you know I actually worked for AT&T for a long period of time. And I was, um, I was a young rising executive. I was one of a small group of people that was being groomed to rise up through the company. And I can remember an unnamed uh, chairman and CEO of AT&T at the time told me, John, do you realize if you would just stop being such a cowboy and such a maverick, you could run this whole company? And then I ultimately left and I went to Dell Computer and I went other places. And the same qualities and characteristics that they were trying to snuff out in me was ultimately the thing that, I, you know, I think is, is who I am. So I remember it. You, if you would just stop being such a cowboy, you could actually run this company. And I, I remember that probably was. You ever have a chat <laughs> since you've been running T-Mobile? No. no, I no, I don't do chats. Uh, what's the best advice, and who gave it to you? Again, I was an athlete my whole life, and you know, I I just think um, most of the good advice that I got came from coaches and high school coaches, and you know, the the concept of uh, just you know taking what's good and making it better and taking what's better and making it best and that it's a constant iterative process and it never ends and it's based on hard work.